recent study turns the table for the billion dollar dialysis industry. The shocking truth is that end stage CKD patients on dialysis don't live any longer than those not doing it. Is dialysis just a big lie? I can't figure out what's next. Let's pause for a moment and really let that sink in. We're talking about spending four hours, three times a week, tied to a chair. And with what benefit? This is the very question Georgia, a 77-year-old retired social worker from New York, was wondering before talking to her new nephrologist. But this woman had already made her decision. Although her kidneys were failing, she didn't want to begin dialysis. Her reason? She has many relatives and friends with advanced kidney disease. She watched them travel to the dialysis centers three times a week, month after month, to spend hours on the chair. They'd come home weak and tired and go to bed. She told the reporter, it's a day until they feel back to normal and then it's time to go back to dialysis again. I didn't want that life. What her nephrologist isn't going to tell her? However, is that they are detoxifiers that can greatly extend the number of years a CGD patient can have even without dialysis. This is what I want to focus on in this video. Today, I want to unveil these powerful alternatives that could redefine your journey with CKD. Catherine here, I'm a doctor in natural medicine and I have been helping and counseling CKD patients for more than a decade now. And the hard truth about CKD is that many, too many patients are only told they have CKD when there is nothing more they can do, when the only solution is dialysis. But today, I don't want to focus just on the bad news the newspapers are reporting. Today, I want to go in depth about the alternatives to dialysis, especially those that can also be used by stage 3 and 4 patients to delay kidney failure as much as possible. Before that, I must tell you immediately that I am not against dialysis. Some of the patients I talk to are, however, against it. But one of the things I recommend them if they are in stage five is to at least consider dialysis. Yeah, yeah, I know this may sound strange coming from me, especially in the context of this new study that basically disproves that dialysis can prolong the life of a CKD stage five patient. But you see, dialysis still has reasons to exist. For many stage five patients, it still has its place and purpose more about this in a moment. However, if you are here because you want to know what other options there are, don't worry because this is exactly what I want to talk about today. In many studies literature, detoxifiers such as acacia fiber, for example, have been used in studies in patients who wish to avoid dialysis. End stage CKD patients were able to have a decent quality of life without the need for dialysis thanks to these detoxifiers. Are detoxifiers a real alternative to dialysis? Let's find out. Let's take a look at what detoxifiers have been used in medical literature and with what results. Okay guys, a disclaimer here. Never stop dialysis if you are already doing it. And as I was saying, if you are at the point of needing dialysis but you have not started it yet, get informed very thoroughly before making any decision. So let's talk about detoxifiers. The first thing I want to mention is something called kyrosan. It was studied on hemodialysis patients as a way to reduce creatinine and other uremic toxins while improving other key parameters. Kyrosan is a polymer found in the exoskeleton of crustaceans. It is actually very powerful at lowering creatinine levels at the point that when it was tested on dialysis patients, it lowered creatinine pretty efficiently but it also improved cholesterol and hemoglobin levels. This is very important because having too low hemoglobin, a marker for anemia, can have serious consequences. 
Now, Gydrosan, which is a common supplement, is usually marketed as a weight loss aid. It is supposed to bind to fat as well, but I wouldn't rely too much on it as a magic weight loss pill. It's actually more effective at binding to uremic toxins than fat, creatinine in particular. Kydosan is so powerful at reducing creatinine levels, it was actually used in some studies to lower creatinine levels in patients in all the stages. Yes, this is overall a pretty powerful detoxifier. But of course, the most known uremic binder, the most known detoxifier for kidney disease is Acacia Fiber. This supplement is extremely powerful and it was tested in several end-stage renal disease patients with no residual kidney function who weren't able to tolerate dialysis. Some patients were able to go on for four years without dialysis and without any uremic symptoms at all. Yes, this is pretty interesting. But while many CKD patients in stage 3 and 4 are already taking this supplement today as a way to delay dialysis, I really wish more studies were made about it. Especially after this new study was made to show how little dialysis actually helps. We absolutely need to work on finding alternative treatments. Actually, there are even more powerful detoxifiers than this. We will see in a moment. Before we get to them, the question many of you may have in mind is, how do I even know which one is going to work for me? Now, this is an important question. Finding the right detoxifier, the right dose for it, and the right method to take. It is not always easy. It largely depends on your medications and on the other issues. CKD might have caused you. For example, I had this patient that kept asking me why I wasn't recommending them acacia fiber. It was for their mom, actually. So they call me and they say, you always recommend acacia fiber in your videos. Can my mom take it? By the way, this is not the dialysis patient we are talking about. Replacing dialysis is not something a naturopath can do for you. This is about someone who wants to prevent end-stage renal failure. Anyway, what this person didn't know and um, that I had to explain is that since I was already recommending their mom to start five different supplements, you know, for her anemia and for her phosphorus levels, also adding in acacia fiber was a little too much. I also didn't want the fiber to reduce the absorption of the iron supplements. That was my top priority. So yeah, maybe let's start with the most vital things. I told them, then we might think about acacia fiber. And this happened a few months ago. However, the good news is that their mom eventually started to improve, even without acacia fiber. As her hemoglobin went up, her kidney function went up as well. This is why the answer to the question, which detoxifier is going to work for me, is... It depends, depends on what else you are already taking. It depends on your stage of kidney disease. It also depends on what other issues we might have to take care of before starting the fiber supplementation. And guys, I know this may sound as confusing to navigate as an Ikea store where the exit keeps moving. But here's the thing, that's exactly why you need your healthcare team to put in some overtime for you. You deserve someone who's got your back, someone who can advocate for you, just like this amazing person is doing for their mom. And listen, if you don't have someone to advocate for you, or if you are sitting there right now burning with a fundamental question about detoxifiers, I've got your solution. Shoot me an email because I'm here to help. I've started offering remote one-on-one -on -one video naturopathic consultations and let me tell you, I've already met some absolutely fantastic people from this very community. These are folks who are not only knowledgeable about their health but also determined to improve it. And now with my direct guidance, they're taking their health to the next level. And I've decided to free up even more time in the coming weeks so I can help more of you with my expertise. This is your chance to get the answers you need personalized just for you. So if your goal is to protect your kidneys and you're tired of playing the guessing game, wondering what works and what doesn't, stop waiting. Send me an email to katherine at newhopeforkidneypatients.com and let's talk.
You also find a link in the description to contact me directly because your health is too much important to leave to chance. Let's take control together. Your kidneys are worth it. And so are you. Let's make this happen. And let's get back on topic now because today's video is all about a very important question. Is dialysis just a lie? We all know how incredibly expensive dialysis is and not just in terms of money. Dialysis can take a huge toll on the quality of life of a patient and it can take away a huge amount of time as well. It also does not really replace your kidneys, you know? Dialysis is good at removing certain toxins such as urea and creatinine, which of course are the main causes of the symptoms associated with stage 5 kidney disease. But on the other hand, it doesn't do a great job with, you know, excess fluids, extra phosphorus and some larger waste molecules, including for example potassium. It also does nothing for the other functions the kidney performs. Yes, your kidneys are not just filters, they also activate vitamin D, which is essential for overall health. Dialysis can't perform this function. They also produce erythropoietin, which simulates red blood cell production, crucial to prevent anemia. Dialysis patients often suffer from anemia because this function is impaired, and the kidneys also regulate the renin angiotensin aldosterone system, or RAS, which plays a crucial role in controlling blood pressure. Dialysis does not address this regulatory function. All these issues that your kidneys use to manage must now be taken care of with the use of medications and they must be monitored by a professional figure, usually your nephrologist or your dialysis team. So basically the picture here is that of a patient that spends a lot of time doing dialysis, even more time recovering from dialysis, and they still have many issues associated with kidney disease that require several medications and of course the intervention of a specialized doctor so why do we even recommend dialysis to patients anymore well because of course the main goal of us healthcare providers is well keeping the patient you know alive i don't think any of my patients would be happy if i didn't even try to do that so my usual recommendation when i see a patient with a gfr below 15 is to start at least considering the option of dialysis but now in 2024 this new study comes out showing us that dialysis can only do so little for improving a patient's life expectancy as we can see, and I quote, among 20,440 adults mean age 77.9 years, the group starting dialysis survived 770 days, and the group continuing medical management survived 761 days. So just a tiny improvement in terms of life expectancy, just about a few days. But of course, even more days were spent doing dialysis by those who were doing it. Now, guys, this is a very large trial, so it's clear we must pay attention to it. However, there is a group of people that should never skip dialysis. So question, who is always going to need dialysis? Well, younger folks and those who will be able to get the transplant. Now guys, it's important to keep in mind that this study was conducted on older patients, all right? They were on average around 78 years old. It's clear that their life expectancy depended on that as well. And also very important, none of the participants of the study was able to be put on a transplant list. So if you are younger than 78 and you have a chance so if you are younger than 78 and you have the chance of being on a transplant list, absolutely do dialysis. Avoiding dialysis if you have a chance to receive a kidney for transplant is not even up for discussion, all right? I want to be very clear on this. Don't miss your chance for a transplant because you don't want to do dialysis because a new kidney will give you decades, not just years. So that's the first thing they didn't consider in the study we are looking at. It was only conducted on older patients, so if you are still young, those findings don't apply to you. Now, one more thing they didn't consider in this study is the use of detoxifiers. Since detoxifiers have been studied in some renal failure patients who needed to avoid dialysis, let's talk about this more in depth. 
We have already seen a couple of options, Acacia Fiber and Kyrosan, but those are not the only available detoxifiers. Actually, there is one very significant study that was conducted on five end-stage renal disease patients who weren't able to tolerate dialysis. In this study, appropriately titled the Dialysis Free Protocol, researchers used a method that we can really consider outside the box thinking. They in fact use a combination of three different detoxifiers, each one aim at specific renal toxins. First, they used a uremic toxin absorbent, which is a way to remove the most dangerous toxins. In this study, they use activated charcoal, which works in a similar way to acacia fiber, but activated charcoal, which is maybe even more powerful than acacia fiber, comes with a big issue. It removes a lot of stuff, and I really mean a lot of stuff. At the doses, these patients were given vitamin deficiencies and even malnutrition were a risk. In fact, they were continuously monitored by the team of researchers that conducted this study. Second thing they used was lactulose. Lactulose is an oral prebiotic and it has a different mechanisms of action from activated charcoal because otherwise these two wouldn't work when taken together. And you see, Lactulose gets the toxins out of the gut, mostly by working as a laxative. This is important because in CKD patients, a lot more toxins will get from the intestine to the bloodstream if they are constipated, all right? Yeah, you gotta get stuff moving in order to get stuff outside the body. And the third part of the equation was, of course, a renal diet. Now guys, in my recent video, I went really in depth about this study. So if you want to learn more, watch my video up here. And this is all for today. Thank you for watching. God bless you all. Bye-bye.